Hello friends, this is Zods, don't mind the voice, I'm a little sick, and today we're gonna talk about five amazing individuals in the DBD community. Five people who one day woke up and decided that they wouldn't just play the game like most of us, but that rather they would become part of its history, and they would go down in the history books as doing amazing things. And the thing is, I, I think most of you are not gonna be familiar with many of these stories, so I think it's gonna be a really fun watch, go get some popcorn and let's get started. Our first mad lad is someone that is very close to my to my heart. I love this guy. I met him randomly in my lobbies a bunch of times. His name is Max, and if you play in Europe, it's very likely that you've seen him in your lobbies too. If you played against his killer, you know that he's a very strong and scary hunter, but that also plays really fair. And you might have also had him in your lobbies as a survivor. And it's the kind of person that really stands out and is pretty unmistakable. He always plays as a green Dwight, always. He always uses the most ridiculous off-meta builds imaginable. And number three, he is also extremely good at the game. Uh, take this match for example, where we randomly pair with him. Uh, and he completely carried our team by running this Wraith around Haddonfield for almost the entirety of the match. Then in the endgame, when the Wraith found someone else and got them with Noid, he offered himself as a kill. And just like an anime protagonist, he actually turned the bad guy to the good side, and then the Wraith let us all go. But the funny part is that we invited him to our lobby, and we played with him again, and in the next match he did exactly the same. He hard carried our team by running these hunters the entire game, and then at the end, he also made them friendly. What a wholesome dude, and I, I, I just can't explain, he is the one person in this game that has figured out how to level up charisma. Uh, one day we'll find out about his secrets. Our next mad lad is actually a member of my community that is probably not very well known in the overall DVD community, but he should. His name is AMGC7, and he has what you would call an inquisitive mind. One day he noticed an unusual spawn structure in one of the maps he was playing in, and he found that funny. And he wanted to find out whether or not that was very likely, and whether or not he could get that again, and what were the rules that governed the random generation of the maps. Uh, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of resources for this. The developers don't really have any official page that explains the maps. The wiki has very little information about each. So, he just decided to do it himself. He booted up his console and launched DVD on both his console and his PC, and then he played with himself, and went around the map, and took a bunch of notes, and ordered them all neatly, and then he restarted, and then he did it all over again, until he had a full page of information, and completely reverse engineered the entire map's spawn logic. He then put this into a neat picture for himself and other people to understand. And this alone would be really nice. But he wouldn't really be in this video if he did that once, now would he? Of course not, he did this again and again and again. And then again, 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 again for every map in the game. Putting them all into neat pictures that he has agreed to let us place in the description, so you can find them down below. Uh, for other people to understand how maps works, for himself and the community to understand which ones are fair and which ones are not, and also in the process identifying several bugs that have already been reported to the developers so that they can be fixed and maps are more fun and fair for everyone. And I, for one, am extremely grateful. Thank you, ABC. Unlike our previous map, lad, this one, Nightlight, is actually very well known in the community for being one of the more seasoned and experienced players in the competitive scene. This is a dude that has been playing tournaments since pretty much 2016 and winning them pretty consistently. He even played in the 2020 $15,000 Best of the Best tournament, which I also participated in, and he won with his team. But the thing that elevates him to mad lad status is not all of these accomplishments, but rather what he did recently in the Swish second DVD tournament. Alright, so picture this. We have a massive event spanning days and days of matches featuring some of the finest and strongest teams DVD has ever seen, and Nightlight's team starts out kinda rough. They lose a match and are tossed into the loser's bracket. From that point on, they fight to the bitter end every single time winning every single match until they are finally out of the loser's bracket and then they beat more teams and eventually they make it to the grand finals against another insane team, 
and somehow they managed to win. But that's not good enough, because according to the tournament rules, if a team comes from loser's brackets, they actually have to beat the champion twice in order to be the grand champion. And at this point, Nightlight and his team were exhausted. Many, many long games, many, many ties, and everyone was on edge. They needed to do the impossible again. And soon after their next match, they found themselves in this situation. And as you can see for yourself, Nightlight's team is in an unbelievably bad spot. His two teammates are dead, he's on the ground, and his other teammate that is alive is being chased by the killer with only seconds left to go. But even in this very dire situation, they didn't give up. While his teammates stalled the killer for as long as he possibly could, Nightlight waited patiently, and when his 4 minute bleed out timer was just about to expire, picked himself up with the perk Unbreakable. At that moment, he and his teammate coordinated to run to the place where they knew the hatch would spawn because of an offering, and then they created a very unique situation where the killer can do nothing to win. Uh, imagine this from the point of the killer. Who do you hit? If you down the Atom, he will immediately bleed out and then Nia will get the hatch. So the killer down Nia. But then Adam started healing her, and you cannot pick up a survivor that's being healed, but you also cannot interrupt it, because if you hit Adam, then Nia gets the hatch. These survivors somehow managed to engineer a situation where the killer would almost never be able to kill them both, so that they could at least get one person out. Eventually, the killer tried to look for an opportunity to catch one of them, while Nia was a bit far from the hatch, but then this happened. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Does she oh, recover oh, fast oh. enough? She got in! No. Got what in. in the hell did we just watch? Oh my god, what? So, okay, big deal. Nightlight and his team managed to get one person out. But now he had to play killer himself and do even better than this. How exactly is that even possible? Well, the survivors on the other team did not make it easy. By the time that all gens were done, only one of them was dead, and now Nightlight had to juggle between three survivors and two exit gates that were entirely apart from each other. Somehow, somehow he just managed to do exactly that back and forth, up until the very last second where survivors barely, barely managed to open one of the gates and have two people crawling out. But it was at this moment that the survivors from the opposite team, Team Jinx, realized that they were in trouble. In this tournament, the amount of hook stages is what gives points. They realized that if Fang was the one hooked, she would give too many hook points and it would not be good. Fang could not be hooked. If Nightlight caught Fang right now, they would lose. Nightlight likewise also realized this issue and then what the survivors did was something quite smart. They made Claudette go down and sit right on top of Feng so that it would be almost impossible for the killer to correctly pick up the right person. It would now be a 50-50 of who gets picked up. And if Claudette was picked up, then Feng would probably have enough time to crawl out and then they would lose the game. But in this time of extreme fatigue and unimaginable tension, what did Nightlight do? He didn't break a sweat. He simply stepped outside, to the side, he looked at which character was further ahead, he realized that Fang was slightly further ahead, so he placed himself ahead of them, spammed the spacebar, and automatically picked up the correct person, winning the game and winning the tournament in doing so for his team. What an absolute chad. Our next mad lad is a Spanish player named Steve or Steve1v1 that also plays in tournaments but a different style of tournament, the 1v1 tournaments. These are events where the killer and survivor start on predetermined spots. When the chase begins, the killer has to down the guy and the survivor needs to last as long as humanly possible. Lots of people do this repeatedly and whichever one has the longest time wins the event. Now, a normal survivor like me maybe can run a killer for a minute or two. In fact, the footage that you're seeing right now is me doing exactly that. It's me participating in one of these, just to show you what it's like. But the really, really good 1v1 survivors can sometimes last a lot longer than that, four or five minutes even. But then there's Steve. 
Steve is on a league of his own. In this event, where I run the killer for one minute, he ran the hillbilly for eight minutes, way more than anyone else. And this was no lucky accident, he really is that good. In another event, he ran another hillbilly for more than nine minutes, somehow. And keep in mind, the map RNG for each player is kind of random. Sometimes in these events, the player that runs the killer for the longest is the one that gets the best map. But not Steve, he has become so good that he can play several of these events and win them all back to back to back just because he is so damn solid at what he does. And if you watch his footage, you will learn exactly what are the things he does. Many subtle things betray just, just how much thought he puts into every decision he makes. On this TL wall, for example, you can see him subtly move his camera to actually get a view through the hole in the wall to check for the killer. And how he plays against the strongest chase type killers like Blight, it just blows my mind. Just check out this clip. Oh my god, nice oh. faking here. He's blocking oh, like beautiful. an amazing... Holy moly, Steve, what a beautiful play here. Oh my god. Oh my god, the body block from Steve. Holy moly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, oh, 360 oh. as well. 360 as well as Steve. I I don't see well. what a beautiful run might be able to take it back here, but unfortunately only has the hill available. Does, does, does the fake successful? Does, however, not have any pellet available here, and I think this is unfortunately going to be the <gasps> size of the No way, no fucking way, no fucking way. No, 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 now, before we reach the final mad lad of this video, a quick honorable mention goes to cheaters. If you play DVD, you know that there's no shortage of them, they're typically busy holding streamers hostage and ruining things for everyone, but every now and then, God in his infinite wisdom will pair a cheater with another cheater. And predictably, when you put a person that will do anything to win with another person that will also do anything to win, well, let's just say the masks come off and they really show the world how pathetic they are. Uh, the clip you're watching right now is one of my favorites. Uh, you've got a nurse downing everyone super fast, but then one of the survivors starts running at the speed of light and even the cheating nurse cannot catch her. And at that point, the nurse has to crank up their own cheats to catch up and cheat and kill her as well. And I don't know about you, but to me, this is one of the, the funniest things. The thing that someone has gone out of their way to buy cheats to ruin someone else's game and then their own game is ruined by another cheater uh, it just it just brings a certain smile to my face and talking about things that put a smile on my face our number one mad lad is someone that you've already seen in this video it's max but not not that max it's max as in poppers Poppers is a DVD streamer who, over the years, has gotten thousands of people into this game with his videos and his streams. And some time ago, unfortunately, he suffered from a stroke and was later diagnosed with ALS. ALS is a very shitty disease that very quickly deteriorates your health, uh, but that didn't stop him. When he had a hard time speaking, he still played DVD. When he had a hard time moving, he still played DVD with a pedal. And when even that was difficult, he and his buddy Silver Chaos King played the game together and still brought joy to a lot of people. But the reason why he's featured in this video is not any of that. It's actually this match that he and Silver played recently, which is one of the funniest games I've ever seen that you absolutely have to go and watch after you've watched this video. And if you look at the footage, you'll see that this game has started pretty recently. Our duo is working on a generator in the shack, and at this point, the killer shows up and decides to commit to them. Big mistake. For the next three minutes straight, this huntress got looped, dodged, stealthed on, head on, juked, multiple times, all of this while they were still finding time to work on the generator from time to time. The hunters eventually managed to down them somehow, but they did not they did not like what had happened. They did not want this duo to get away. She stuck around, eventually downed them with Noid, and this is typically the point when your teammates leave you to die. But nope. It didn't really matter, they still had the old decisive which allowed them to escape and ultimately get out of that match. You'll love to see it, please go watch this match, it is so bloody funny.
And if you want to see more of Max and help him out, please head over to his stream and check out the Lighting the Fog event. This will be a charity event benefiting him and him only. It's happening later this month and me and a bunch of other DBZ streamers are going to be there. You'll find the links for all of this down in the description. Please check it out. And that is all for our second episode of DVD Matlats. If you missed the first one, you can catch it uh, right over there. And if you know of anyone else that has done amazing things, maybe people in other regions that I've never heard of, please let me know in the comments because maybe we'll do another one like this. That was all. Thank you for watching and have a lovely day.